If you ask someone on the street about Polish history, you'd probably get some thoughts about World War II or maybe the Soviet Union. But sadly, many people, including myself, aren't really told much about Poland or its people when we're growing up and going through school. Even for history fanatics like myself, we can get caught up in learning about more popular topics like Rome, Greece, Egypt, China, or a hundred other genres of history that catch our eye. There's nothing wrong with that, but for me it's meant that for a long time I didn't really know about the depth and breadth of Polish history. Which raises the question, why should we care about the history of Poland? Truthfully, I could say that you should care about the history of Poland because it touches on the history of nearly everything that has happened in the last thousand years. Sometimes just a glancing reference, but in many cases, Poland was right in the thick of the action along with the global powers of the time. Or I could point out that knowing the history of a new group of people, if you don't already, is worth the time. But really, I think it comes down to the reality that the history of Poland is absolutely fascinating. Coming from the perspective of an outsider, learning the history of Poland, an ongoing journey, has been incredible. The characters, the intrigue, the wars, the romances, the rise and fall and rise of a nation over and over again. It captivates the mind. While I could go on and on about all these reasons Polish history is worth knowing, I'll save us all the trouble and rewind the clock 900 years earlier and let a man speak about why he was recording Polish history. We don't know his real name, but we call him Gallus Anonymous. It's not clear if Gallus was his name or if it was a word for a Frenchman or an Irishman, but nonetheless he recorded a good deal of early Polish history for us in the 1100s. At the beginning of his report, titled Deeds of the Princes of the Poles, Gallus answers the question of why he's recording the history of the Poles. He says, quote, Many a king and many a duke throughout this wide world performs deeds of note beyond counting, but for the neglect and scorn of the learned, or perhaps the lack of them, these have been buried in silence. I have therefore thought it worth the while, for all my poor style, to record something of the exploits of the Polish princes, in honor of one of the most glorious and victorious of dukes, by name Bolesław, rather than to leave posterity no record at all of deeds worth imitating." End quote. This history, like with many other nations, empires, and kingdoms, starts in the legendary past. Many of us are familiar with Romulus and Remus and the founding of Rome, or with some of the foundation myths of the Greeks, or with the hundreds of other founding myths that are littered across history. For Poland, the founding myth starts in the city of Gniezno. In this city, there was a duke, whose name I won't bother you with, who had a son. At this time, there was a local practice of holding a ceremony for the first haircut of a son, sort of a traditional thing. The haircut was sometime between the age of two and seven and carried a great deal of significance. It meant that the father was accepting the boy as his son, typically the boy was given a third name, and the boy was officially the responsibility of the father to look after. Because this was such a big deal, this ceremony also overlapped with an offering of worship to local deities. This duke, presumably being a duke of refined taste, decided to throw an elaborate banquet surrounded by many local nobles and friends. All was going well until there was a knock at the gate of the city. As the legend goes, there were two visitors who were asking to join in the festivities. Sadly for the duke and his offspring, he made the wrong decision and turned the strangers away. These strangers were left wandering about the suburbs until they stumbled across a different man with a different son, who also happened to be coming of age. This man was named Piast, which is going to be an important name for the next few hundred years. He was a poor man, but nonetheless he invited the strangers inside. As he entertained his guests, they asked if he had any ale to drink. The man answered that he had a small amount that he was saving for his son's ritual haircutting, but that they were welcome to it, and that he was also preparing a piglet for the ceremony, which they were also welcome to. The strangers, presumably quite hungry after wandering around the suburbs of Gniezno, ordered the ale brought and the piglet slaughtered. To the utter astonishment of everyone present, the cups apparently overflowed with ale and the piglet produced ten buckets of meat to be eaten. This supposed miracle obviously couldn't be hidden, and people came to see and to take part in the feast. In this group of people was the duke. After all, who's going to turn down free buckets of piglet? Not the duke, that's for sure. With everyone present, the two strangers, miraculous providers of ale and piglet that they were, cut the hair of the boy, gave him the name Ziemowitz, and foretold the bright future for him. As the story goes, this future was indeed very bright. So bright that it ended with Siemowitz eclipsing the Duke. Unfortunately for the Duke, he didn't get to just have a pleasant retirement and ride off into the sunset, but was instead reportedly chased out of the city by rats that were trying to eat him. Seeking relief from these rats, the Duke hid in a tower, but the rats kept coming, with many of them dying at the base of the tower trying to get in. Now, I've never personally smelled a dead rat, but from what I understand, it is one of the most foul smells you can imagine. Which is why, with these dead rats piling up around their ousted duke, his formerly loyal friends abandoned him to his fate. This fate was, unfortunately, to be eaten alive by rats. And here we leave the duke. With the duke dead, there was need for a new one. Legend has it that it was offered to Piast, but he declined in favor of his son, 
who was elected Duke of the Polans by popular acclaim and founded what was to become known to us as the Piast Dynasty, the first dynasty of Poland.